Yo, what's going on everybody? So, I decided to make this breakdown its own video because I think it deserves to be in its own video. But anyways, pretty much what we're gonna be covering is my biggest trading day so far in the history of my entire trading career, in the history of my entire trading journey, which is a profit of $202 thousand dollars trading gold which i was actually short on gold which you guys could kind of see the profits here i'll also post an instagram video uh, that i post on my story so you guys can see you know a little bit of my kind of first initial reaction of when i actually close out the trade at a two hundred thousand dollar profit which it's insane because it's only been literally years of hard work dedication staying up all night or staying up super late to try and get better at the craft learning how i can improve and become better every single day because again trading is a game where you're not competing uh just against the markets you're also competing against yourself so you need to learn how to be able to improve on your own characteristics your own trading psychology your own mindset and your own work ethic so you need to be better than what you were yesterday and really looking to be one percent better than what you were the previous trading day learning from your mistakes really learning how you can improve every single day as a pretty much analyst where you're analyzing price action and looking for the next possible moves where you could find the next high probability setup so anyways i'll show you guys a profit real quick and then we'll get right into the breakdown yo what's good everybody i just landed from my flight from vegas i'm super tired but i'm super excited at the same time because i literally just broke my personal best trading record which i just closed out my trades for a two hundred and two thousand dollar profit i can't even explain to you the amount of sleepless nights i've had that all led up to this point consistently showing up to the market every single day but anyways let me show you guys uh, pretty much what i got going on over here so this is the same exact athens account that i've been trading on for the entire year so far and this is pretty much the trading history of the two trades that I took or the two positions I took on gold, 140K profit. Then we have a $60,000 profit here, which this was a huge position. $60,000 profit here, 50K withdrawal, leaving the account at a total of a over a half a million dollar profit. Then as you guys can see here, the withdrawal was already approved. And then you guys can see the crypto. I already sold the BTC, which is now in my Kraken wallet. And you can refresh the page. See, that's not a screenshot. I'm about to send this to my bank. So anyways, before we get on to the rest of the video, so you guys saw the IG video there, right? So that's the video that I posted on my Instagram story where you guys could see my first position made me a profit of $142,000. Second position made me a profit of about $60,600. And then I did a $50,000 withdrawal to pretty much cover my expenses from my Las Vegas trip, right? So you can see my withdrawal has pretty much been approved here by the Athens Markets broker, which you guys can see that this is the email that I got from their support team when my withdrawal actually did get approved at around 9 a.m. And then you guys can actually see uh, that this is an email that I got from Kraken, which is my exchange that I actually use. And then you guys can pretty much see here, this is the exchange that I use, which pretty much is Kraken. It's very similar to Coinbase, but I like Kraken because it's a lot faster. They use Kraken. If you guys want to check out Kraken, you guys may as well go and check out Kraken. So this is the withdrawal that I did for my trading account that went straight to my Chase account. And this is an email from today, April 25th at 11 a.m. is when I got this email. Really quick before we actually get on to the breakdown. So I've never done this before, but pretty much what I'm actually going to be hosting is a 14 day boot camp. It is going to be a live class, which it will be recorded. So even if you can't attend the live class, you will get the video recording. But obviously the goal and the objective would be for you to actually join the live class. Along with the 14 day boot camp, you guys will get access to the day trading institution, which as you guys may know, have made many successful traders, Mitchell stocks, Chow, we have multiple traders every single day showing their profit and loss, which, which you can see traders every single day making pretty much their investment back from DTI along with any profit they may actually may make. So DTI has been helping traders literally worldwide. So you guys, if you join the bootcamp, will obviously get access to the day trading institution where we do webinars four times a week as a continuous kind of like lifetime support type of thing to help you grow and elevate as a trader. So if you guys are interested in joining the bootcamp, you can got, you guys can go apply with the link 
down in the description. There are going to be limited seats, of course, because we don't want just an influx of people to actually join and the boot camp be unmanageable. So make sure you guys do go apply to be updated on the boot camp and find out more information about the boot camp. Other than that, let's get into the rest of this video. So when it came down to me looking for gold shorts, one thing that I was discussing with the day trading institution group was that basically if price were to actually break under this key level being 1960, right? Cause again, the way my trading methodology works is all based off of supply and demand. If we have a level of resistance here and we have a level of support here, what we're going to be looking for is for price to maintain above or under these areas. So if price is maintaining itself above a level of support, then predominantly we're going to be looking to buy. But once price breaks under this area of support, predominantly we're going to be looking to go short, right? So the concept was as long as price can maintain above 1960, we'll look to buy. Once we break under 1960, we're going to be looking to actually go short. So price broke under 1960 and 1960 didn't hold this resistance. Then you have to ask yourself as a trader, well, if price breaks under 1960, where could we potentially travel to next? Which would be the next level of support, which in this situation was going to be, I believe, 1940 or 1950. So 1940 was the next level of support that I was looking at, which was a more minor support. But the overall major level of support that we were looking at was 1960 and 1900 flat so those were the two areas we were looking to actually take gold short if price were to break under 1960. so initially here is the break under 1960 and notice how price failed to break above 1960 on the next trading day with this bullish candlestick here then price actually rejected 1960 here giving us a bearish candlestick and then the pre pretty much this is where i ended up taking the position on these daily candlesticks here so this was a swing trade if you guys take a look at the sessions indicator you guys can actually see pretty much how many days this trade played out so i'll go over entries exits and everything else in a minute and why i took those trades but pretty much my position was from this point on to this four hour candlestick here so you can see i roughly caught let's say around somewhere around 450 to 480 pips because i didn't necessarily hold to where i wanted to i closed out a little bit early once i saw a 200k profit which I'm not going to lie. I did get very lucky because I did end up trailing my stop loss and I was on a flight back from Vegas, like I said. So I did end up taking the second position on my flight from Vegas and then I pretty much fell asleep, woke up in Miami and I was up 200K, right? So <clears throat> pretty much this trade up from point A to point B from first entry to exit lasted about three days and four hours. So it was a swing trade. So when I was actually looking to take the position that I was looking to take uh, on gold, I'm going to extend this out so you guys can see. So these two yellow lines is going to be my resistance level. This is going to be my main level of support within this consolidation range. Again, the same aspects still apply to support and resistance supply and demand. Once price gave us the first rejection of 1960, being here and price continue to go down this was the first time i was looking to actually short gold i didn't necessarily short gold at 1960 where i initially wanted to because price didn't give me a retest but what i did see was price attempting to push back up and at that point in time i said well okay now price is trading above this kind of more intraday level of resistance here at 1948 <clears throat> so for me to want to short gold i would like to see a break under 1948 so price will be trading back under resistance and i want to see price take out this previous four hour low at that point in time that's when i will make an entry point so now if we go down to an hour time frame what we could see here is market structure in detail so we have a big impulse to the downside a pullback an impulse to the downside and then we had another pullback this is at this point in time is where i was looking to actually trade gold so now when looking at this market structure here we know in a bearish condition we have lower lows and lower highs. So this point here is our first lower low. This is our first lower high point, and this is a low. So for price to be turning bullish and me looking to buy, I know price has to take out this lower high point. At that point, I'm looking to buy. Any other point after this lower high point uh, or any point in between this area here, I'm still looking to go short. Why? Because bearish market structure is still being respected. Unless price were to break above these highs at 1960, I wouldn't be looking to go long. But 
price ended up actually pulling back to this intraday level of resistance. So notice how we have this intraday high right here. I'm gonna kind of just draw it out for you guys. So notice how price essentially came up to this intraday high and had this huge bearish weakness to it. What I wanted to see after this bearish variation pattern was price break under 1948 resistance. Well, in this situation, support and price take out these lows. Good? Yeah, go on. All right, and price take out these lows at 1947.500. Once price can break under these lows, then that's when I'll look to go short. So price did break under those lows, and once price broke under the low, those lows, I pretty much made a calculation in my head. I said, okay, well, if price can actually break under that low, I'll make an entry right, right once price breaks under the low. I'll put my stop loss slightly above the high here because this stop loss is huge. This stop loss is about 100 pips, but I was risking 100 pips to pretty much look to gain 300 pips. So essentially what I'm doing here is just looking at the risk reward ratio. I'm not looking at the pips all too much because if I risk 10 pips for 30 pips, it's the same thing as risking 100 pips for 300 pips. All I have to do is kind of just adjust the lot size to pretty much where I want it to. Now, I did have big risk behind this first position, but again, I'm gonna put big risk or big money and big risk behind a high probability move because I have a higher probability that's gonna play out in my favor. If not, then I was perfectly fine with losing the amount of money that I actually did. So when it came down to that, pretty much the position kind of broke even on me and then price actually continued to go in my favor. Once price broke under these lows here on this hour time frame, that's when I actually moved my stop loss to break even on the first position. So that trade was already risk free. Now price pretty much came all the way down to my first target, which was 1917. So I was already up about three times my risk at this point in time. So 1917 was my first target, 1917.500. And if price were to break 1917.500, then my second target was this low right here at 1985, which again is the next level of support. You have to ask yourselves, if I'm gonna be looking to take this position, you know, if price breaks this area of support, where's price most likely to travel to next? And that decision was ultimately made up to these lows over here. There's a reason why price tested this area and rejected, tested this area and rejected. Look what's happening now. Price came down to this area, rejected. Most likely price will actually break through because on the daily time frame there are no candlesticks in this area. It's just gonna be considered traffic, right? But we could definitely see a probability of price breaking through this support level, but I don't know that, so this is where I'm looking to get out. This is gonna be my second target. Now. Now the fact that my first position is already at break even, I have nothing to worry about. I kind of just look to hold the position. Now, what made me hold past my first target here? The first sign that we could see price break this support level was this four hour candlestick close. So right once price closed under the level of support on the four hour time frame, that's when I actually held the position for another candle. This candlestick held under the support level on the four hour time frame as well. That's when I actually jumped to the hour time frame. On the hour time frame, what we can see here is price close under support and actually starting to reject support. So notice these big rejections to the upside here. And pretty much I had one of my best entries uh, with this trade here as well. So notice all this rejection to the upside. Notice how previous support is actually holding as resistance at this point in time. And remember, we're still trading under support. So right once price showed all this weakness to the upside here i pretty much made an entry right once price blew through these previous this previous h1 candlestick low so in terms of risk reward ratio on this position my entry was about this area here where price blew under the low stop loss was slightly above this hour high because if price were to break above these hour highs i'm most likely wrong anyways and then my take profit was again the same take profit level so i'm looking to gain another three times my risk on this position so on my first position, I gained three times my risk on that trade. And then I held to the next target where right once this stop loss was at break even, pretty much this area right here after price broke under these hour lows, I moved my stop loss to this area here. So realistically, even if this position did get stopped out, I'm still making money because this position was already in massive profit. Again, I was up three times my risk. Worst case scenario, I would actually lose this uh, second position, but still make two times what I'm risking on my first position. Again, it's all about math and all about any the day in the green. So pretty much self-explanatory after that, price pretty much pushed all the way down. And by the time I checked my MetaTrader 5 again, price had pretty much hit my take profit point where I saw I was up $202,000 and I ended up closing the position. So 
that was the breakdown for you guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope you guys were able to benefit off of the breakdown. And I hope this does help you out in your trading career, learning how to become a better price action trader, learning how to become a better trader just overall and in general. So again, if you guys you know want to see more content like this, and make sure you guys go comment down in the description. Make sure you guys go follow me on social media as well. My Instagram at Lambo Raul. And if you guys are interested in joining me for the boot camp. Uh, you guys can go apply with the link down in the description. Anyways, I will talk to everybody in the next video. Take care, guys.